Hello and welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim, I'm joined by Donald. How are you? I'm feeling rather nostalgic actually, even though we've got these, we're in the season for all the new games, but all these new games, it feels like we're in 2007 all over again. We've got a new Tony Hawk game, we've got a new Rock Band game, we've got yes. a new Guitar Hero game. And you know what, as the week that we're recording this is actually the 25th anniversary of the Game Boy's release in Europe. Now Tim, I'm sure you played the Game Boy as a kid. Yes, I did. I had a Game Boy Pocket, the little silver one that was black and white. I played Man, that. I would have been so jealous of you back then! Played the hell out oh. of uh, Pokemon Yellow. That was yeah. my game. Fantastic game. What uh, about po you? Pokemon Red was my poison. I absolutely devoured that game. One of my proudest gaming achievements was, in fact, getting all 151 Pokemon. I decided to close my time off with Pokemon, then no Pokemon has come out ever since. <laughs> yes, and that's a good mentality to go yeah. into. Although some of the later games were actually good. You just yeah. ignore the Pokemon that were in them. Yeah. And then that's pretty much fine. I was just like... Pikachu has really let himself go recently, hasn't he? Yes, he certainly has. But uh, all, all these old games coming out as new games, yeah. uh, it can be a bit disappointing and can be very good and nostalgic because yeah. when we're looking at games like Tony Hawk, is like they're having day one patches that are larger than the game itself. Yeah. That is not what traditional games <laughs> were. They, they didn't even have patches, so they had to get it right the first time. Yeah. Uh, which is but a bit unfortunate. What? I was like, as my, like say, take that. I'll take my Rock Band, thank you very much. Very much. I'll be happy for more Rock Band in this the year 2015. Yes, uh, but Rock Band was one of the better ones later yeah. on in its iteration, so we'll yeah. see how it fares up against the new Guitar Hero as well. R review forthcoming, but in the meantime, we've got an episode this week, don't we, Tim? Yes, well, uh, you have a look at the Taken King yes. from Destiny with uh, less Peter Dinklage. Yes, much less, thankfully. <laughs> we also have Matt, who's returned from Japan. He takes a look at the Tokyo Game Show show floor. We've also got a movie segment later on in the episode, but first up, we go into Smite. Now, Shaney, we're, we're self-confessed Dota heads. I think uh, that's yeah. I think is that what the term is uh, addicted to drugs, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, great. Um, you know, we know there's other mobas out there. Yep. Lol, lol, yep, yep. hot lol. Um, yeah, yeah. Lol. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The other, the other one that's that's probably of note is Smite, mm. simply because. It's known as like the one that does it differently, and it is. It's a third-person action console moment. release, and that's that's the reason we're looking at it today. It's recently had the, the full Xbox release; it was in beta for a while, yep. and now it's finally fully released. So we thought we'd kind of give you a rundown of, you know, like why we think it's why why it's different, what works, what doesn't work. And I think straight off the bat, it's the fact that it's not Dota. It will work on a console where something like Dota or LoL would not. Basically, third-person that takes away, I guess, some of the view tacticalness that Dota and LoL have. But it subtracts that with a little bit different style. Like the mini map's a little bit bigger, so you can actually see everything yeah. a little bit more. Everything's made for it to be in third person, especially even yeah. the controls. Like yes. it's made to be able to be playable on console. That's yeah, and it does totally it does a really good job of that. Like mm. the 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 auto aim is not overbearing. It's not cheap, which is always a worry when you play console releases and stuff. Like um, it's not cheap. The button presses are, are, are well responding. Um, the fact, I mean, like you say, with the isometric view. It's easy to see what's coming up behind you, yeah. whereas in this you can't. Yeah. Like so, but they make the they make the gameplay around that. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's faster to turn and run than this. So there are lots of little things they've done to acknowledge their particular style. Mm. But I think the big thing is, I guess, does being different make it, you know, worth better wrong. or worse? And I think I think it's still when it's all said and done. Yeah, it is its own beast. It's very much its own beast. It's not quite though, it's not quite lol, and it's not even true that those skills would carry over. Those skills, yeah, don't really carry over. Like, playing Dota or lol, you think you might come into this game, you might be able to, like, you know, blitz Stock, everyone, yeah, yeah. yeah, but no, you can't, because it's really totally different. Especially, like, the one thing that you did mention, like, the view behind. Like, yeah. you're just viewing it from a camera, like, in Dota, so you see everything around you, so it's, like, basically a 360 view. This is, like, almost, like, you know, Cone eye, yeah. like you know, first person view while you're driving a car, like yeah. you can't see shit behind you. Yeah, yeah, you're and that's, get like running through from behind. It's and that, that's it, that's exactly it. So you're, it requires a different set of actual practical skills. And yep. while it is good to have that knowledge of the five v five mode, which yep. is the esports mode, which is yeah, yeah. But there are there are plenty of other modes. Arena, which is good for starting out. Joust, if you just want a bit of back and mm. forth, argy bargy. Um, it is like particularly good at those skills that are good to have. You understand yeah. the idea of having a jungler, having a lane, um, being out of position, yeah. being out of position, stuff like that. Um, and as a result, 
I think that it's good to have that knowledge. But I still think coming into it as a fresh as a newbie, there's enough CPU modes to to teach you the basics. Yeah. There's enough modes that you can you know try everything, even though if it does water down the pool a little bit. So I still think it's worth a look for that. Do you reckon it's still worth a look for Motorhead? It's still worth a look just because even it's free. Yeah. Like you only get eight or ten heroes, but free. It's a game that you want to try out that, like, if you've had knowledge and you've enjoyed Dota or LoL a little bit, it's probably worth a try. For a game that has a genre pretty much named after itself, Gauntlet Slayer Edition has a bit of, like, a big shoe to fill. And I'm not sure if it does fit the full shoe. <laughs> yes, well, it's... Pretty fun, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got that old school arcade feel, so it's brought that over very, very well. But I don't think it's one of those games that I think needed to bring that feel over, because mm -hmm. as a game that I'm not sure is going to be very well played multiplayer-wise, because the online is a bit meh, and to have four people sitting on a couch these days is a little bit hard these days. Like, And the single player itself, it just feels like it misses something. Like, mm. there is no character progression except for buying items, and even those items are just, I guess, more gameplay tweaks instead of buffs and, like, it just nerf. Yeah, but it's a little bit better than having, like, you know, items which are just, you know, number increases. No, I, like, it's, I guess it's a different style that you want Yeah, if you're like, looking for a Diablo experience, well, def definitely, it's, di a different, it's game. a different game. Yeah, yeah. but... This one's more the arcade -y. Yeah, let's all sit on the couch and let's go kill monsters and together. And stand back and shoot arrows, because that's what you like to do. Yeah, there we, there we go. Elf is the easiest class. Elf is the easiest class. Uh, but with the wizard, you've got lots of room. That, yeah, that is a good point. That it, like, it has a lot of variation, actually. Like, from your four classes without DLC, there is the one DLC class. You've got Warrior, you've got your Valkyrie, which is kind of warrior half slight archer with like the shield throw, shield block. Mm -hmm. It's a different, totally different style. And then there's wizard which changes up a lot because it's basically- it's like the magicka system. Yeah, magicka system where you have like three elements and you make spells with those elements. Yeah. It's a so really like nice nin touch. Ninja seals. <laughs> yeah. Bang, blah, 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 bang. Except a little bit, uh, you know. But less weeby. <laughs> yeah, less weeby, let's just say that. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's one of those games that you might not get much enjoyment if you're playing by yourself, but if you do have friends that you don't really hate too much, <laughs> you might have a bit of fun. Would you agree? You have a lot of fun, actually. Oh, right, a lot of um, fun, okay. Well, also, melee classes are pretty different. Like, yeah. Try playing a melee. It's a whole different game. Well, welcome back, young man. You've, you've been away in the Far Eastern lands. Yeah, yeah? I've got to say, 2015 for video games has been absolutely huge. It's been and pretty big. I was just trying to think, like, what would be like halfway around the world? Like, is Japan the exact same? Are they thriving after the hot off the heels of E3? You know what I reckon? I reckon if we flash back to Tokyo Game Show for 2015, we might have an answer. Yeah, so, I was you just ready? I can say. I'm just. <laughs> Okay guys, we're standing out here right up front of the Bandai Namco booth here in Japan. Jotaro is just over there because we've just previewed Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven. So it's the latest 2v2 battle uh, battle system, uh, very similar to in the vein of like Rise of Incarnate or like the Gundam Boost games, uh, where you go around uh, fighting enemies and kind of like a the closest thing I could imagine is something like Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi. So you've got an all over the shoulder view, um, all sorts of skills at your disposal. And uh, there's a lot of juggling to be happening as well. So you can have a lot of fun with the battle system. It's very free flowing as well. Um, very, very forgiving as well. But it, when it all comes down to it, it's a very faithful adaptation of the manga version of JoJo's B Bizarre Adventure. You could choose from people from all sorts of parts. Um, ma majority of it being part one, part two, part three, like Kakuyin and uh, Jotaro, along with uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Joestar as well. So awesome stuff. People are getting really into it. Uh, God Eater Resurrection as well is a uh, is a fantastic game in its own right. Um, the the kind of adrenaline fueled answer to the Monster Hunter series. Definitely worth checking out as well. Everything else from Saint Seiya, Naruto, all the mainstays are all here and they're ready to hit uh, stores around about December. It's awesome stuff by Bandai Namco.
Hey guys, here we are, right at the front of the Sony PlayStation booth, and my goodness, it is one of the craziest and largest booths in existence, sporting a whole bunch of different games like uh, the Uncharted uh, collection, along with uh, the game that I tried out, Bloodborne, the Old Hunters, the latest DLC for Bloodborne. Now, it's very fast-paced, as you'd expect from uh, normal Bloodborne play. Um, a lot of like uh, crazy bosses and crazy just grunt enemies that are willing just to tear you to shreds. A lot more humanoids and there's a lot more strange strategic, uh, strategic uh, avenues that the enemies take. For example, running away from you so that the herd can actually get you and, and, and uh, completely tear you apart. Now, I also got to check, uh, check out Dark Souls 3, which is the complete antithesis to Bloodborne. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Um, to, to shift from Bloodborne straight over to Dark Souls 3 is a complete paradigm shift, I must, I must admit. Um, a lot more technical, a lot slower, um, and it's going to throw off a lot of people that played a lot of Bloodborne. They're going to have to readjust to the, uh, to the cooling sensation that is Dark Souls uh, 3. So, absolutely nuts. Can't wait to see more of it. Okay guys, we're deep in the confines of the Square Enix booth and I must say there isn't really much going on in terms of gameplay, however there is Star Ocean, Integrity and Faithlessness uh, for the PlayStation 4. So this game it looks absolutely nuts uh, in terms of aesthetic, looks very bright pastel colours, environments look really rich and fantastic. Um, but the battle system is, uh, a lot of people will be getting, uh, will take a little lot to get used to. There's a lot of uh, button prompts as in presses and holds, uh, being able to uh, chain combos, along with being able to switch characters around as well. So if you're not really feeling one, you can switch over to the next with the press of a button. Pretty easy stuff. Um, do pretty grueling when it comes to bosses. The game does catch you off guard a fair amount. So aside from that, there's a lot of feel, like a lot of showing of stuff like World of Final Fantasy, along with like Final Fantasy 15. But the Star Ocean uh, integrity and faithlessness was the star of the show here at the Square Enix booth. Well, I guess that, that's it for the game. What was your most memorable moment otherwise? Me being able to bend uh, the fabric of space and time. Wait, oh no, you're talking about yeah, games? Yeah, 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 oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So probably my favourites uh, in, in particular were JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Eyes of Heaven. Yeah. Uh, very, uh, very, very great game. Probably the uh, proper way to do J-Stars. It seems pretty, pretty yeah, yeah. crazy, pretty hectic. Um, some other things in particular, Monster Hunter Cross is absolutely hype. It's some crazy stuff. Can't believe it's half this shit you can do in the game is possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, just everything from the booths, uh, some really cool stuff, namely the BB gun booth at Capcom because BB guns are legal in Japan yeah. and it's absolutely nice. It is, it is. So that's it. Uh, TGS done for another year. Thank you, Cardi. See you guys next year. Hello, my name is Jason. I'm doing this movie segment with Liam. Hi, Liam. The reason Jason's not here because we are talking about a video game movie, so we brought in Don. Hi. So recently, the BBC released The Game Changers, which is a sort of dramatised version of Rockstar, the creators of Grand Theft Auto, it just chronicles uh, stay, uh, the, 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 the creation yeah. of San Andreas, yeah. the hot coffee mug, um, incident and uh, the entire Jack Thompson controversy of him trying to uh, figure out whether there is a link between violence and video games. Since it's come out, uh, Rockstar has was a couple um, sort of posts saying that it's all bullshit. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because it's a narrative film. You can still enjoy the film regardless of how factual it is. And what do you think of the movie as just as a standalone thing? I liked it. It's Daniel Radcliffe stars as the main character, the yeah. president of a rock star, Sam. Um, and I thought, yeah, sure. That, <laughs> that, that's a you know name that's hard to remember. Um, but yeah, so it, it's it's I thought it was an interesting sort of look into uh, the sort of moral crusade because it's it's sort of Daniel Radcliffe sort of creative, uh, but very controlling um, personality versus um, Jack Thompson. Played yes. by Bill Paxton, who is the the moral crusader who actually compares himself to Batman and Elliot Ness. 
Yeah, and ultimately, like, the movie tries to portray them as two sides of the same coin, visionaries in their own field. However, it doesn't really, it tries to do that in, like, ten other things at the same time. It tries to chronicle the making of San Andreas. It even pops in a reference to Rockstar Pretends Table Tennis. It try, it does too much in the 90 minutes of give, it's given. It's almost as if it was a 60-minute documentary that had to be stretched out into this mini-movie. And then there's the writing, which is very on the nose. When you have very clear expository dialogue like hello there my smart little brother right there but I mean, yeah no the writers weren't given all the time in the world i mean you're, you're talking about a standard technique of of introducing characters and, and i like the film it does have a lot of different storylines happening and mm. maybe some stuff gets lost in the mix but i i did enjoy it, it did remind me a lot of the people versus larry flint mm. and that's that's sort of uh on the scale of uh sort of who has the moral high ground versus artistic integrity and where that sort of matches. And that's something I find really interesting. I liked it more as a portraiture of um, Sam Hauser and of Jack Thompson, but that got lost amongst everything else. But it's not the worst representation of video games in movies. You've seen Pixels, haven't you? Don, why did you tell everyone? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I did through, sit through Pixels. Uh, I laughed once at a Peter Dinklage tax joke and I chuckled... Uh, the sec another time as well. That's it. It's kind of um right. Two jokes in ninety minutes. Yeah, it's kind of uh, if you're a ten year old Adam Sandler fan who loves The Big Bang Theory, you will like Pixels. If you're any normal person, you should maybe not see it. A glowing recommendation right there. Today, we retake our home world, and with it, our legacy. It never gets old, but Blizzard do make some really good cinematics. It's going to be weird then when the Warcraft movie has some really dodgy CG. As I, you just know it's going to happen. No, no, that's <laughs> not going to happen. I can't believe that. It's going to be what every Blizzard fan has always wanted, and that's like a movie-long so cinematic. It's, so it's going to be a ticket that comes with a special mount for your World of Warcraft of character then. Of course it will. If it doesn't, I'll be very disappointed. It needs to have a pest. Like, I'm getting <laughs> pets and card backs from my BlizzCon ticket. Oh, you ticket. said card backs? Yes, card backs. So can I have you can... card back, please? Maybe you'll get card back for getting Legacy of the Void. Ah, oh, now you have my interest in Legacy of the Void. <laughs> or, you know, HOTS. Yes. Uh, so, I'm, I'm going to let you talk about Legacy of the Void in StarCraft since oh, that was just pretty colours for me. Go. I, I'm very keen for this game because finally they're going back to the, like, the relationship between the Dark Templar and the... You're just not interested at all, but it's going to be a really good game. I, I'm really looking forward to it. They're bringing a lot of new mechanics into the game. Can't wait. It's going to be a great Blizzard game. And it's the end of the StarCraft 2 trilogy. They're going to finally wrap up the story and we'll see probably another team up between Raynor with the Queen of Blades and the Protoss. And why are you not excited about this? I'm so excited. And you just... It does come with a card back, you say, right? When Destiny was released last year, we all had very high hopes for it, and then it kind of faltered. Here was this game that was way too much of a loot grind, the Peter Dinklage bot wasn't great, and sure the shooting was great, but there wasn't much to do, there's like two things that you did over and over again. Now uh, Jordan, you've gone, you went to level 30 with Destiny 1.0, didn't you? Yeah, so I did play through the original vanilla and I was a bit, as some people, a bit disappointed in the yeah. start of it. It was missing a few things. What I did appreciate of it is it always had good gameplay. Oh, it yeah. controlled great and it did look quite nice. But now um, Bungie have taken all of that and seemingly improved on it with Destiny the Taken King, which also marked the Destiny 2.0 patch. And let's just talk about the Taken King. It has cutscenes, it has a story, it has characters we actually care about. Yeah, I know that's what one of the things I found missing from the vanilla was there was kind of void of soul, void of mm. character. But now you've got 
characters like Cade Six talking to you all yeah. the time who's kind, kind of funny Phil and interactive. He's pretty much Nathan Fillion doing Nathan Fillion. And you've got like an actual villain, a boss, you've got Oryx with a story yeah. leading through other things. Just the fact that I can tell you character names yeah. and the significant characters is just a huge leap ahead of what I we were I think had. probably the best metaphor for all of this is the fact that they, re they replaced Peter Dinklage with Nolan North as the little ghost that follows you around. And like the the emotion and interest that he puts into his performance, like it's sort of metaf a metaphor for the rest of the game, like how much attention and interest that the developers have put into now the loot, where he actually gets substantive drops to the point where I'm not sure about you, but the very first thing I picked up in the Tekken King was much better than my legendary stuff from the previous 1.0. Well, there's a whole load of content this time around. Yeah. And yeah, if you've got that kind of angle, if you like to go for loot drops and all that kind of end game content, there's so much there. I was surprised when I finished the Taken King story and went back to the main city, I suddenly had 13 quests on me. So there's so much end game content, but mm. now you've got Taken King released as a standalone product. If you go and pick that up, it's kind of a full release price, but you're getting the whole vanilla game, the two other expansions that were pretty decent, mm. and plus all this now as well. So it's a pretty substantial package for the price they're asking. But at the same time though, it is kind of hard if you're a completely new player to enter in at this point, considering the community is so mature. Most people have decided whether they want to invest in Destiny or not. So unless you have some friends who are willing to go along with you or who are willing to shepherd you from level one to level 30, 40, I believe the cap is now, then it's still going to be, it's still going to be mildly dull because you still have to trudge through the original vanilla content before you get to the much better content in the Taken King. Yeah but if you blast through that story like it was a bit dull but it's pretty mm. short really it's pretty quick and you get through it so really I've kind of been having a lot of fun with it so I can wholeheartedly recommend picking this, yeah. recommend picking this up if you're a new player. And that it still has probably the best in business gun players and the shooting in this game still feels fantastic. So if you're if you're previously invested in Destiny well you've probably already picked up the Taken King well as you're watching this but if you're lapsed I reckon like now might be actually be a really good time to hop back in. Now, Don, you have to convince me of something because yes. the initial Destiny I was very excited for. I, I think we, we all were. Yes. I didn't end up actually playing the game. Huh. So I, I did play bits of it, but I never got into it myself. Is the Taken King a good spot for people like me to come into the game? You know what? I'd say yes and yes. <laughs> Because essentially you're coming in from uh, essentially day zero, right? You've got no characters, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've got a whole, say, 25, 30 hours worth of content with just the expansions. It doesn't include the new Taken King. And this is with the new loot system with everything redesigned of mine. So it's a lot less of a painful experience than what we had to put through. <laughs> So it's the Dia it's the Diablo three Reapers Souls of Diablo. Yeah. yeah. So, but without the really crappy loot two point name yes. that that Diablo came with. Yes. Uh, I think that's something that I might get into because, for as far as time constraints go for yeah. an MMO, how much of a time sink is it? Well, you could potentially spend six, eight hours wandering around your first, going through your, the raids for your first time. Yeah. So you're essentially, you're given a blank slate, basically. You don't know what you're doing. But other than that, like, it's a, you can sink in as much time as you want. As in, if you can still, you can still chew at it just with daily quests, you'll but, do it fine. But if you want to vociferously go through the strikes, the raids, then it's also there for you too. Juggling two MMOs at the same time, probably uh, not recommended or? For you, for you, since you're also going through Dota and apparently you're learning Hearthstone again. Yep. Yeah, you have not enough time in <laughs> the universe, Probably not son. the time. <laughs> but uh, that's it for this week. Yep. There's some exciting events coming up. Uh, 9th, 10th of October is the Crown CSGO International Tournament, 55 grand. Uh, definitely check it out online because it is sold out. There is also the AMC Australian Movies on Comic Expo which rise from the f ashes, the f phoenix life from <laughs> Armageddon. See, Phoenix is a comic book reference. Yes, I see. And we've also got PAX after that, so get excited for PAX. Lots of panels mm -hmm. will be involved, but yep. that's it for this week. So visit our website, www.newgameplus.tv. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash newgameplustv. Follow Twitter and Instagram at newgameplustv. And follow us on YouTube, we are newgameplustv, where you can watch videos and live streams. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you guys next week.